You unlock this benefit with the key of Patreon. Beyond is another dimension. A dimension of thought. A dimension of speculation. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both waffle and substance. Of things and ideas. You've just crossed into the podcast zone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for us talking Twilight. Uh, I've got to be careful with that because that sounds like I'm talking about sparkly vampires. Um, uh, but we are back with episode 11 and we are going to be talking about and when the sky was opened uh, and this is about uh, astronauts syst- well, no, look, systematic, disappearing from his- not just history from reality um, uh, and I will start from the outset I really like this episode uh, this is a bit of a doozy so uh, Julian what were your thoughts about and when the sky was opened yeah I agree I agree it's certainly better by far than the last two it has a kind of like classic feel to it i don't yeah. think that it's probably one of the best episodes but it it feels like a classic twilight zone episode well put together cool idea plays it out well yeah i think that's the thing is i say it, it's it's well structured and well paced and this is obviously that 30 minute episode but it's it never it never feels like it uh outsays it's welcome but it doesn't feel like it's rushing either um, and I, I just like the way it starts. This idea of, and because it has flashbacks in it as well, so you get this guy, one of the astronauts, comes in to see what you know, what his fellow astronaut. They've just come back, they've crash landed. And he's like, you know, you, you, do you remember this guy? Like, who did I leave with yesterday? And it's like, oh no, you left on your own. Like, you know, about nine thirty in the morning. And and then it's this thing of like him, like, no, 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 no. I remember this person. Nobody else does. I remember this person. And you then get to see that this person did exist and you get to see the encounter and then you see him disappear and him disappearing. It's not done. You don't see it. It's not on screen. It just happens. And then the panic that sets in Mm. and then, and then obviously that plays out. You sort of bring up to speed and then it happens again against an off screen. It just sort of happens is so creepy and so well done that it really, I was like, this, uh, yeah, I was so into this episode. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it, it Maybe because the, like, the previous two have been a little bit weak, but no, I really, I was, I was digging this one. Yeah. And I think I, I was going to say the acting is, you pointed out that the acting was, was good uh, for the Yubo pilot in the previous yeah. episode. The acting in this episode blows everything away. Um, the acting, I mean, they really seem like they're going crazy. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I love the newspaper with sort of three astronauts returning and then it's down to two and then it's down to one. I do find myself, you know, wondering, like, you could look at that ship and see how much room there is, you know. Um, well, I would just nitpicking. I, well, I would go back because the thing is, the ship that they've been on uh, disappears as well at the end. The X-52. Mm-hmm. Um and and so I I'd put you could probably go back and find it goes from three seats to two seats to a single seat. Like I'm 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 pretty sure like reality is shifting around them. Um and that's one of the reasons I love this episode as well. Like there's no explanation. I complained a little bit in perchance to dream and I'm like, well, there's no explanation for this. Like you don't need one because this is so well done and it has that sort of like the drama. But I love the fact that this isn't explained and the fact that they've clearly done something in space or something has happened. And they're being eradicated from reality uh, because of this mission they've been on. It's absolutely cool. Yeah, there is that line of like, there was like, uh, sort of like, we weren't supposed to be there. We're yeah. not supposed to, you know, which is possibly toned down to such a degree because, you know, uh, Serling and, and others involved don't object to going into space, right? It's not mm-hmm. like going into space is like Frankenstein's monster, like you've crossed a line. Humans weren't supposed to exit the atmosphere. Um, you know, so whether that's a sort of like interdimensional thing or aliens or a naturally occurring thing is is left unexplained. But it does it does remind me a lot of, you know, sort of these episodes where humans go into space and then something strange begins to happen. Mm-hmm. Um and curiously, it, it is sort of similar to uh, the first, um, uh, the first of that uh, that British series you're, you're so in love with. Um, that uh, what is it? Uh, um, 
Quatermass. Yeah, yes, the first yes. Quatermass where the astronauts are disappearing. This, this definitely or, had a, I had a Quatermass moment in this. I was I def- <laughs> like three astronauts going back. Yes, uh, you know because when he goes down to two, I was like, "What is he absorbing him?" That'd be great. <laughs> that thing they do. Um, so yeah, no, I, I I did I did like that. This felt like to me they like. As many of these do, and I, I now feel like having, you know, because this is my first run through, like this is my first proper run through of these. I see this now as a as a true precursor to the X Files. <clears throat> like I, I I knew that was the case before because I'd seen it and people had spoke about it, but like now I'm like, I'm watching this, and I'm going like, okay, I can imagine there being like Mulder and Scully insert into this episode where they're like there's a there's a there's a one of this this lieutenant keeps ranting about this thing and you've got to go you know they get for whatever purpose like Mulder inserts them into this and then by the end of the episode they're a bit like why have we come to this town like you know and them forgetting that there was these characters and moving on like it would work just as well like yeah i don't know there's just it, it felt content not contemporary in that sense but like this story could easily be played out and still works you know, um, in that sense, like there's nothing that sort of fits it into 1959. This feels like mm-hmm. a solid, timeless episode. Yeah, I agree, and I think the the idea of sort of like I, being erased from continuity, right, is mm. ahead of its time. I mean, that's used terribly, by the way, in uh, the Moffat Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, um, you know, where it's like, you know. All right. Well, if you erase them, then the whole plot collapses, mm. you know, so. Uh, but uh, here, you know, it's interesting that, you know, the X-20 winds up disappearing at the end. And, you know, sort of like along the way, you think, well, I guess it's just a, a one pilot craft now. Um, I, I like your idea that, you know, sort of it would have helped to sort of like have a shot of the X-20, you know, <laughs> cockpit. And there's one chair left. Uh, yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it works here. And it also reminds me of sort of stuff that's been done in comics, like with Astro City and sort of, you know, post-crisis on Infinite Earths with this idea of sort of the timeline being altered and people going through that and experiencing that on the ground instead of from the the protagonist's perspective outside Mm. of time. Um, and that's a that's a very effective plot device, and this is doing it in fifty nine. Yeah, and well as well. Like it, mm-hmm. it, it, one of the things you said before is about you know this this only works if you fit your own rules. You you have to st- stick by the rules, uh, and because this is obviously a one off, it's a, it's a, you know it's a single episode. It hasn't got a bunch of legacy and other stuff it's got to account for. So working in this framework, it works really well. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it's just the way it plays out, and the fact it's like this, there's no build up, there's no special effects. Um, the, the vanishings just sort of happen. You know, the first one is they're in a bar, and he goes to take a phone call, and he mm. says he feels weird, and that's it's, it, it, I almost felt a little bit like, um, uh, <laughs> it felt a little bit like Thanos, you know, in sort of like Spider Man. Yeah, Spidey and and um, and Iron Man, you know, Mister Stark, I feel weird. I have that in my head, and I'm like, oh my god, like you know, so Thanos has clicked his fingers. Um, but the way you know, it's not played for for schmaltz. Like you feel like the guy's like, now I feel weird. Something's wrong, and I'm mm-hmm. worried about it. And I want to go. I've got to make a phone call. And he, it's almost like instantly he knows what it is, because he then goes, I've got to, I've got to ring my parents. And the, the, you said about the acting, and again, this this guy's reaction when he's like, "I spoke to my mum. She did. She told me she never had a son, and then my dad told me to leave." Like, and the guy, the, like the, the guy, the look, the look on the guy's face, and he's, the other guy's yeah. like, I'll, I'll, "I'll go sort this out. I'll be back in a second. And then he's gone. He's just not in the phone box anymore. And I'm just like, and it, you know, it's it's just like, again that guy's panic is like, no, 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 no. Where's my Where's my friend's beer? Like he's just dropped a beer. Like, Where's my friend's beer? What do you mean you came in on your own? And he's like, "This is a joke, right? It's you're taking the mick." And then he runs back to the phone box and he's gone. And he's just like, "Oh my!" It's just, mm. just I say, it's just played so well. Like they know how to do this. It doesn't take special effects. It doesn't take a big pop. No one turns to dust or anything like that. Mm. You don't need to see anything in the foreground or the background. It just happen reality doesn't need to wibble and wobble around them mm-hmm. just happens 
And I think that's more terrifying than when it's loaded with this idea of sort of like it's shifting around me. No, just, no one else gives a shit. Like, this is just happening to you. That's, you know, really quite scary. Yeah, and I think that so much of it depends on the acting. Mm. Um, you know, he, uh, Rod Taylor plays uh, Clegg Forbes, who's sort of the main guy. Yeah. And, you know, he's very good. And later on, he comes back to the bar and he sort of breaks in and he, there's this wonderful moment where he knocks over these stacked chairs. And it's this act of aggression that while not hitting anybody, I mean, the Twilight Zone is filled with uh, cases of violence and people killing each other. And yet I was so struck by that, that act of aggression, of frustration. Mm. And I think that the other thing is that the horror of this, all of us can relate to. Um, we have all, you know, it's like that moment where you think like, am, we disagree on what just happened. You know, like, no, you're recounting this completely wrong. Yeah. Am I going crazy? Do I, re you know, what is going on here when our memories <laughs> diverge like that? Uh, and even having like a friend, you know, you're at a bar, your your friend goes out to the car or something or goes to the bathroom and you think, is he OK in there? Has he disappeared? You know, you yeah. have this sort of like, are we <laughs> Rip Van Winkle or something? You know, Um so, I mean, there are these kind of like, it, it is very, I mean, we talked about like the role of imagination in Perchance to Dream and how it kind of touches on that, but fails. I think mm. this touches on a paranoia that we can all relate to a lot better. At least I can. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, I agree. I, there's definitely that thing of like, say, you know, almost like um, the questioning of sort of like object permanence. Like, you know, if it's out of mm. sight, like, is it, really, <laughs> is, is it really there? Like, you know. You know, yes, I'm not a toddler. Yes, I know it is there, but this then sets in that paranoia of sort of like, especially like you say, if someone recounts events different to how you've you witnessed them, and you're like, hang on, did 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 we see something different? Like, did you know that man? It's almost like the Mandela effect, isn't it? That you know, mm -hmm. which I know is complete bunkum, and and people, you know, it's complete, it's complete nonsense. But um, it's a uh, it, it, it does fall into that paranoia, doesn't it? You can see that. Oh, no, no, no. People seem to remember things different to me. Like, why am I remembering this differently? And so, um, but and this just p brings it down to sort of like pinpoint focus, um, which I find, which is, and, and this is not like true cosmic horror. This is, isn't it? Because this is mm. that sort of thing of like, there's no, especially in the story, there's no justification given for it. You know, it's not like they are paying for anything, or that we, at least we know of. Uh, it's not like that, you know, there's no justice to this. There is no, um, you know, uh, an eye for an eye or any of this other stuff. It's just, it's just happening, you know. And then, yes, yes, there is the line of, like, oh, we shouldn't have gone there, which is a really, you know, arbitrary line of could be anything. Um, and it, it, it's just, there's, there's no reason for it, which I find, you know, that I just, again, I, I enjoy that this thing and it's, it's sort of, it's, more about the terror of that it's just a nice simple almost like a horror story in that good a psychological cosmic horror story yeah absolutely and I, and I think that it's also interesting that we both like sort of iterative stories right mm. and, you know we we've liked that on, on past episodes and here you have really you know three men all three disappear it's interesting that it's iterative, right? I mean, it, it pulls the final rug out from under you. Not only does your 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 main character sort of presents this problem, I remember Ed Harrington. Then you have this extended flashback where you see Ed Harrington and you see basically he's right. Ed Harrington disappears. We continue that for a little while. And then he kind of awkwardly says, like, I guess I went home, right? You know, after that flashback. But then um, then he disappears. Yeah. And then we have this wonderful final iteration as uh, William Gart um, remembers what we've all seen, right? Yes. What we've all experienced with him. So now he's able to be this audience identification vehicle to not just have us discover through flashback what somebody's experienced, but we've literally gone through what he's gone through. And so his madness really strikes home. And then very quickly he's disappeared and we kind of get the the final rug pulled out from under us, but I think it's it's masterful how well that's done. 
mm. how the 30 minutes is really filled with relevant stuff um, and how it's able to be iterative without ever repeating itself or going through a fourth guy or, you know, it never stretches too far yet gives us exactly what we need. Yeah, uh, it's it's a really well, I said before, it's really well paced. Knows when to pull the rug, knows when to sort of hold on to bits and pieces. You know, it's 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 really well done. That final that final rug pull, even as it's playing out in my head, I was toing and throwing. I was like, okay, is this going to be sort of different? Like I said, I was thinking, like, is it going to be an empty room, which is what it is, and or is it going to be they're going to they're going to go into them? There's going to be some weird thing of you know he's going to be there but he's going to be talking about this three is it going to be his madness then that sort of like you know he's the only one left or something but to have them all three of them disappear feels really nice it's a really sort of like there's no follow-up to this needed it's just a well-rounded episode so yeah no i, I this is a doozy i think I, when the uh, uh and when the sky was open it was it was a real joy to watch actually i've thoroughly enjoyed it well, I, let me just have two quick final thoughts. One mm. is that um, what you're saying about the ending is really that the ending is not a happy ending. No. And that's so rare even for the Twilight Zone, yeah. right? No, they all die. I mean, here they die by blinking out of existence, but that's phenomenal, right? It's mm. not, no, it all turned out for the better and maybe metaphysics was involved, but, you know, the good guys won, the bad guys got punished. No, here it's just we encounter something alien or some effect of the universe and it makes people blink out. No, nope, they're all going to blink out. That's the end. Is really remarkable. Uh, and finally, uh, to to I thought of the Thanos thing too, to make this as stupid as Thanos, <laughs> we need to see a little green man, poorly designed in outer space, who says... I like making people blink out of existence because my planet was killed when we launched an experimental plane. So I go all around the universe making experimental planes disappear because that makes sense, right? Yeah, it is. Sorry, no, <laughs> I had I, to get my last it, dig in. That's I, I, but I like the fact that it doesn't have that. The fact that this mm -hmm. does have no reason. There's there's no antagonist in this. There is no Thanos sort of doing that. It it makes it much much more impactful. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I agree. Uh, but this is cool. This was a really good episode. This was. Um, so yeah, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there we are. That that was uh, and when the sky was opened, our eleventh episode. So we shall see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.